Since the beginning of agriculture, human beings have been responsible for transmitting their knowledge from one generation to the next. In the search to optimize resources in order to achieve better productions, different concepts, or in some cases, wrong ideas have been passed on. Discoveries have occurred thanks to important investigations that have opened the way to new ideas and technologies. Our company was established about uh, five years ago in 2012 and we decided to focus on the most uh, complicated domain in uh, agriculture and to bring uh, the innovative technology into this domain by implementing the most innovative technology and algorithms uh, to help the farmers to grow more and using less input materials. Uh, the process of taking a decision on when to irrigate and how much to irrigate is uh, the most crucial part. There are basically two methods of data collection for irrigation in agriculture. One method relies on empirical knowledge. It is based on the experience of each producer and has inconsistent results. The second method relies on the use of precision technology, such as sensors, but they do have a problem of uh, implementing all this data, absorbing all this data and converting it to real irrigation process. This is why our solution comes uh, very handy and it uh, actually combines those two worlds, the sensing part and the irrigation controlling part. And this is how we combine them together and create the autonomous irrigation solution. In our solution, the farmer doesn't need to take a decision, he just needs to su supply the policy of the irrigation. Well, the device started several years ago, uh, and it, the aim of it was to simplify the irrigation control, make it precise, and and make it available for every farmer. The idea is to let the plant irrigate itself. We call it autonomous irrigation. By that, we mean that the plant is opening a valve and start the irrigation. The Tevatronic company developed the precise algorithm to close that valve. So the plant irrigates itself and we are closing the valve to make sure that we are irrigating to an exact depth that we want without percolation and loose of water. This system works in a very simple way. The sensor, a wireless tensiometer, is installed in each irrigation zone near the root system of the plant, either in the field or greenhouse. The sensor transmits data regarding the amount of energy the roots are using in order to extract water from the soil. This is done in order to understand what the real needs of the crop are in real time. So uh, our system analyzes in real time the data from this tension meter, from this device, and sends this information to our gateway, which is a controller. And this controller aggregates information from other sensors in other irrigation zones and sends it by wireless uh, cellular communication to our cloud server. Our cloud server takes a decision on the irrigation based on the policy for every irrigation zone and sends back to our controller. And this is where our controller starts and stops the irrigation by opening the relevant valves of the irrigation zone that we are getting the sensor data from. The farmer usually has to choose two parameters when he wants to irrigate. One is what tension to open the valve. The second is how deep he wants the water to percolate. The second question is really arbitrary question because he can decide where he wants his root system. Usually, where you send the water, there the roots will, will develop. So this is an arbitrary question, which is depending on the botany of the plant he's working with. 
The question of tension is the other question, uh, the second question that he has to decide upon. And we gained enough experience to know what tension to work in different crops. One hundred years ago, this device was actually invented just to measure the tension in the soil. And we decided that this is the most reliable way to understand the stress of the plant. Roots of the plant are applying a lot of energy to get the water out of the soil. And this is exactly what we measure with such a device. So this device, it actually measures the conversion of all the parameters that affect the plants and convert it to the water tension that we measure. Now let's find out how the tensiometer works. Basically, this is a tube of water. This is a plastic tube with a ceramics filter. And the only way for the water to get out and come back to this device is through this ceramic filter. So uh, basically, we make a hole in the ground and we fill it up with water. We just open it here, the top, put the water inside, close it very firmly and put it in a soil near one of the plants in the irrigation zone. Click on the reset button here. And from that point, this device starts to transmit information to our gateway. And this is how we understand the stress in this area. So basically, this works like a straw, straw of water that uh, when you drink a Coke and you put a finger on top of the straw, the water cannot get out. The same goes here. When we close it very firmly, the only way for water to get out is because this area in the soil is dry. And this is what we measure. When the root system of uh, one of the plants that we measure is uh, uptaking the water from the ground, it creates some kind of tension, capillar tension in this area. And this forces our uh, ceramic filter to sweat. This creates a, a lack of water in uh, this tube, which creates a vacuum in this chamber. And this vacuum has been measured by our sensor here, electronics, and sent by the antenna to our controller, which takes this information and sends it by cellular communication to the cloud server. So basically we can work with any type of soil and any type of uh, crops as long as it has uh, at least 15 centimeters uh, root system. But in all other scenarios we can actually provide a very good value and it could be either on a decision support system where we have only our sensors that are measuring the tension or it could be on irrigation cycle so we are, we are controlling the irrigation. Since the creation of this method, the company has carried out many installations in which, they affirm, they have produced savings in the consumption of water and fertilizers, achieving a growth in production. We are uh, selling uh, currently mostly in Israel, but uh, with the help of the community here in Israel and the developed ecosystem of agriculture here in Israel, we get a lot of people coming in from other countries. And this is the way that we are able to proliferate the technology through the world. And currently we are already installed in Thailand, Sri Lanka, uh, soon to be installed in India and in the US. This is the online web server available 24 hours a day. Its function is to analyze the data collected from all the soil sensors make an adequate irrigation decision and, finally, to send that decision to the switch valve for execution. So, yeah, so user can uh, get into his specific uh, project. He can see all his sensors and can uh, log into one of the sensors and see the, the tension in the soil. And as well, he can see those lines of irrigation and when it started, when it stopped, it, how much did the system irrigate. And you can see that the whole uh, system is very flexible. Every irrigation cycle cannot uh, be resembling to the one that was before. And uh, 
As you can see, the interface is very simple. Uh, there is no complication about configuration of the system. There are only two parameters, basically, that he needs to uh, define. The first parameter, as you can see, is uh, where the mouse now in, is uh, what tension the irrigation should start. So where the tension will start, uh, what is the trigger to start the irrigation, like the tension level. And the next parameter is uh, how deep in centimeters we want the water to, to go into the ground. And this is where he configures it. And that's it. Uh, basically, the other things are like on what uh, time during the day our system can irrigate because there are some, con there are some constraints in the hours of irrigation, like uh, lack of water during specific hours of time. So we can limit our system to irrigate during those specific time slots. And uh, the whole interface that you see here is uh, very easily uh, translated. So we are working now to translate it to Spanish. And then uh, any user that doesn't speak uh, English will be able to log in and immediately understand uh, uh, how the system is working and uh, what exactly did it irrigate for the recent irrigation cycles. Before we de developed that device, Farmers, or we as researchers, we used to try to estimate the need when to irrigate and how much. And we usually, there were several methods of research or practice. One is agrometrological approach. This is measuring wind energy, solar energy, and estimating the evaporation. Uh, this system doesn't look at the soil, it doesn't look at the plant. It just generally estimate the evaporation or trans transpiration of the, of the field. The second approach is the soil, si soil, soil approach. Soil scientists' approach is to look at the soil as a storage room. They will fill up the, the soil to a certain depth and uh, trying to estimate the quantity of water in that depth. The third approach is usually the plant physiologist, which argue that let's look at the patient itself, let's look at the plant itself and try to measure the tension, the water tension on any other parameter in the plant itself to try to estimate when to irrigate. Usually, you have to, we had to use one or both methods or two methods to try to achieve some, some knowledge how, when and how much to irrigate. Well, methods, methods of irrigation is something else. We are talking about the control. We try to control the, how much. There are several methods of irrigation. Normally, or previously, or say even today, in many places in the world, they flood irrigate. This is the oldest and the most wasteful way of irrigating, the least desirable. Then you have sprinkle irrigation, which wet the entire soil surface. But we learned back in 1969-70 that you don't have to wet all the area that you have to use in order to manipulate uh, the work in the orchard or the farm. We can, we can irrigate only about 30-40% of the, of the area. So the, that drip irrigation was developed and that reduced the volume of the area that we are irrigating. And that was also already saving water. But in drip irrigation, there is still water percolating behind the root system. So there is a waste in, the, in, the, in that sense. And what we developed is a control, the right control, to prevent the leaching, the percolation, the leaching and percolation. Why, by saving water, we also save fertilizers. Normally, it's estimated that about 50% of the water and fertilizer are wasted in the, in, in the, both, even in drip irrigation. And we can save that by, by our method of control. We have been testing our system and using our system for 
quite a few years now. And uh, the installations that we have today are mostly done in vegetables. And uh, we have some uh, orchards and uh, uh, olives that we are installed in. Uh, in all of those installations, we get uh, better results. Mostly we save on water and fertilizer, which is important because uh, both the water costs money and the fertilizer costs money. And the fertilizer itself damages our groundwater, as we know. And uh, in some cases, we actually increase the yield significantly so that the farmer can actually feel the difference in yield. So the additional benefits of our system is uh, the way that we use the water while we are irrigating. Since we limit the depth to which the water will get, all the carriers in the water, all the additional chemicals that we add to the water does not go below a certain depth in the ground, which helps us to prevent pollution into the groundwater, uh, which helps us uh, as humans. We get better water quality in our aquifers. Uh, this is a huge problem in heavily agricultural areas, and uh, this system can help us a lot to prevent this kind of problem, uh, while saving a lot of money to the farmer. So the farmer has the incentive to implement the system, and we get the benefit. So this is how our system actually adjusts itself to all the environment changes. Instead of farmer needs to understand and react to the changes, our system will react and eventually the farmer will get the best yield he can in such a situation of changing climate and weather. In some cases there are situations where we do not control the irrigation, like a pivot irrigation or a sprinkler irrigations or uh, so there are big uh, guns of irrigations where we cannot control when it will start and when it will finish. So we are using our system in those cases just a support decision system where our sensors are distributed in this area and wirelessly transmitting this information to the farmer so he can analyze the tension in the soil and start irrigation when it's actually needed and not when he thinks that it should be. And uh, basically he can see the graph of, of the tension in the soil in every section where our uh, sensor is installed and he can uh, actually apply historically, retroactively, the irrigation cycle. So he can see when he irrigated manually and how much did it affect the tension. So he can uh, learn the best practice of uh, next irrigation, when he should start and when it's actually demanded. So this way he can save a lot of water and fertilizer and just react to real requirements of the plant. How we see the future? Uh, farming goes in the steps of the manufacturing market. Just like we had small workshops, moms and pops workshops that were manufacturing just a small quantity of goods and the goods cost a lot. And now we move to mass manufacturing where one giant manufacturer can manufacture a lot of goods, but he does it with automation. This is how we see where the farming will go. Eventually, the farmers will get bigger, and this is a trend that we are already seeing today. And the bigger the farmer, the more automation he needs to keep his business in line. Okay? At the end, it's all about fitting the world. At the end, it's all about uh, making enough for everybody with the limited resources. Less land to farm, more food needed. We can do it only with technology. And this is why we are here.